May meeting of the recording Grand in Water progress. Courses, Water Courses Commission. Our um, something popped up and seemed more okay. Um, okay, the one one item we have on the agenda is a an enforcement order hearing for 14 Cranberry Lane uh, a, is that regarding a, a conduct regulated activity of valid inland wetland force permit 14 um, Kate, I think you're better in what we should be saying than I am. Sure. So I give a really brief update, Diane. It's echoing on me. Um, anyway, so uh, is it echoing for you guys? Yeah. I don't hear an echo. The audio is terrible. It's breaking up on mine. Yes, mine too. A real. Right. How's that? <laughs> everybody's, everybody's. Everybody's. everybody's no, actually, Kate, you're better now. Dave is still actually. Better. Can everybody shut off your microphones and then turn them back on again? That's what I did. Okay. All right, let's give it a roll. So, um, the town got a call uh, that trees were being removed from the Upland Review area, um, which is next to Manitouk Lake at 14 Cranberry Lane. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually pull up our map here. So here's 14 Cranberry Lane. And um, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see where that is in relationship. So here's where Manitouk goes underneath to the old mill. And um, what there is on this property, in addition to the 200 feet from the edge of Manitoba Lake that we regulate, there's also uh, a 75 foot conservation easement that was um, part of the Cranberry Lane development, where uh, 75 feet from the bank, uh, which I can show you that as well, is uh, intended to stay in a natural state with just passive uh, use. So uh, this is a really rough map, but what you can see here, here's Cranberry Lane, the front, and then you have the existing foundation. And then pretty much that 75 feet is right about there. So um, uh, actually it's the second line in, my apologies, but still it's very close. So it's really the tree line that's there. Now um, you have the letter, which I'm sure everybody has read through the letter. And when we went out there, the tree crew had stopped removing any trees um, and they were just picking up any down debris that was in the area and they were doing it all by hand. I mean, they had saws, taking everything out with some by hand and then they were gonna be chipping everything. So when we were out, there was a lot of brush down. It was hard to see exactly uh, how much had happened out there uh, in terms of how many trees. Um, so you had a copy of your conservation easement that goes with the property also attached to this so that you just know about it. It's not something that you're required to enforce, but it's something that's good knowledge for the commission. And then what we have here, are some photographs. Um, and if it's okay with the commission, I can let Diane take us through her photographs that she kindly sent over to us. And Diane Perez is uh, one of the owners of the property and she's here with us tonight. Good evening, everybody. I'm um, Diane Perez. My husband and I own the property. We have lived here for about a year and a half, and I kind of want to walk you through um, what has happened in the last year and a half since we've lived here that kind of prompted us to remove the trees. Um, so in the last year and a half, we've had seven trees come down on their own. Um, on our property. The first picture is a tree that fell across our driveway. You can see the car that is in the driveway. The tree missed it by two inches, actually, and that was a guest that was in our home. And this was a sunny day, no wind, nothing, and this tree just ended up falling on its own. 
If uh, you can scroll down, you can see the second picture. So there was a big storm about a month and a half ago in April, um, in which uh, further down we will see more pictures. But this is a tree that fell on its own across our path, um, walking down to our dock and the lake. Um, and that was part of the storm. And then if you can scroll down to the following pictures, we ended up having three trees that fell directly onto our home. Um, so this is the left side of our house. Um, if you could scroll to the next picture, you'll see greater damage. Um, so this, the tr three trees ended up falling on our house. This has prompted over $30,000 of structural damage this whole side of the house will have to come down. Um, there's cracks in the wall, there's a hole in our house. The chimney has to be rebuilt, the windows have to be replaced. The roof on our house, which is only a little bit over a year old, has to, the whole thing has to be replaced as well. Um, if you could scroll down to the next picture, please. Um, so this is yet another view. So these are trees that fell on their own um, during that last storm. Um, if you scroll down to the next picture, there's just more views of trees that have come down on their own. And the last picture, please. This is a picture of a tree stump that is adjacent to the lake. And as you can see, the stump is um, basically slanted sideways. And one of the reasons we ended up taking this tree down because it was slanted, we were afraid the tree was gonna come down on its own directly into the lake. And as you can imagine, once a tree is down in the water, um, you can't get it out and it would have prevented um, kayakers, boaters from utilizing the um that part of the lake so that is why we had ended up taking this tree down um also our neighbor to the left of our house um had notified us that prior to us moving in a tree had fallen on its own onto our property that he ended up having to call a tree service to come um cut it apart so in the last i want to say two two and a half years total of eight trees that have come down on their own we also have an 18 month old who of course is just starting to run around the backyard and we <clears throat> are planning on putting a little place paper swing set so our mere intention was from a safety perspective and in one of the pictures you saw the dock that we have out on the water my husband being retired, he spends a great majority of his day sitting out on the dock. And the last thing I want to do is sit at work and panic that he's not uh, picking up his phone because a tree branch has fallen and hurt him out on the dock. So um, we had originally, when we were getting quotes to cut down trees, had marked four trees to come down, um, which were... Um, and once this storm happened and all this damage happened to our house, it kind of maybe put a fear in us that, you know, we didn't want more trees to come down and either hurt our family or hurt ourselves and especially our, our toddler. Um, because of the damage to our house, our toddler hasn't slept in his crib in over a month and a half, you know, and it kind of just scared us. We had no intention of definitely ruining any part of the land or whatnot. And, you know, this has been a lesson learned since the beginning. The last three weeks have been, of course, very stressful, but a lot of lessons learned. Um, so I'm going to call it a happy accident. We've met really great people, but we um, have also learned a lot through this. You know, shame on us as homeowners and to not reading our deed. And honestly, we didn't even understand what the word easement meant. What was explained to us when we bought our house is basically to ensure that it's never blocked off because... Um, the fire department needs access to the lake through our property and that's what we thought it meant so we absolutely meant no harm in having anything um, damaged or taken down intentionally we merely did it from a safety perspective um, so when all of this happened and then we you know got our town visitors coming to us it was um, shocking to us but we will definitely do whatever is asked of us um, in order to mitigate the situation. Since then, we have contracted with a company called Save the Tree out of Bloomfield, who are certified arborists. They will be, um, by the next uh, report of the trees that are left, 
and what their recommendations are for us to replant whatever was taken down. Um, and we'll gladly follow any um, of those recommendations and what is asked of us. So again, our huge apologies to the town. This was not an intentional situation. It was just a mere lack of understanding and lack of education. Thanks, Diane. You're welcome. Thank you. I'd have to say, I you know, living on the lake, I've uh, I have trails through my conservation easements. There have been an extraordinary amount of trees down over the last year. I, maybe they all caught COVID. I don't know, but I can uh, I can relate. Not to interrupt you. I will say this: that of course our family enjoys the lake, and and they've um, kayaked over to the big lake, and there was always a, a tree swing that all the kids loved to you know jump off of the tree swing. And unfortunately, that swing is down now because the branch it was attached to that branch snapped off that tree. So, I um I have seen that that a lot of trees are starting to come down in in the woods area. So, you know, lesson learned. I'd love to share our experience with other homeowners. You know, we didn't know what certified arborists were and that they even existed, but you know. Um, lesson learned for us, I'm definitely going to share this, that everyone should hire certified arborists, come inspect, come see what, you know, from a safety measure, what needs to come down, what needs to be trimmed, um, pruned, etc. So that's basically what happened in our situation. Well, thank you. Very good presentation. Uh, does anyone on the commission have any questions or Ms. Brez or comments? Okay, hearing none, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Kate. Yeah, so um, we have the enforcement order in front of us. Um, I, The first page is just a lot of detail about what went on and what the regulations say. But the second page uh, is goes through what shall happen. So uh, just to go through that really quick with everybody and make sure that um, all parties are in agreement. And um, so all work within the regulated area or open review area on the property shall cease with the following. So there was a couple of trees that we went out that were like partially down or leaning. So that, that was to take care of um, that tree there, item number A. Uh, smaller trees that had a broken top, those those could be removed. These were things we talked about with the tree clearing or removal company, just to make everything as clean cut as possible before they left, no pun intended. Um, securing one compromised tree, there's a tree that was leaning. Uh, woody debris that's already come down may be taken out and get into wood chips, but the wood chips can't be put into that area and the thickness. And if soil stabilization is needed to make sure that gets done. And when I was out there, I saw very minimal exposed soils. Um, and there's a lot of leaves out there that could be used to stabilize anything that was exposed. So the item number two, um, to hire a certified arborist to evaluate the property and provide a report within 30 days that evaluates the following within the conservation easement and open review area. Um, would be the impact to the integrity of the vegetation and soil stability. Item B, evaluation of the quality and viability of remaining trees. C, identification of the number, size, and species of trees and shrubs that have been removed. And D, recommendations for mitigation measures to restore, preserve, and enhance the area, which shall include, at a minimum, a replanting schedule. And then uh, item three is that the mitigation plan presented as required in item 2D of this enforcement order is to be reviewed and approved by the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses. And following the commission's approval, it shall be implemented. Planting shall be shall be required to be maintained for minimum viability of two growing seasons post installation. So, um, uh, I think you know the goal of this, uh, as it was crafted was to maintain the conservation easement and Abby will be checking into what's proposed and making sure that it's in agreement with the easement language um, for what's allowed there. Uh, I think uh, two is to make sure that the area maintains viability and by having the certified arborists go out, they could also take a look at the integrity of these trees because you know if some trees are 
past their lifespan and normally would be harvested so that newer trees could grow up in the place. Um, you know, they can look at that as a whole so that there can be some safety involved as well as uh, understanding what should be replanted, what's going to re-sprout, so on and so forth. So um, if anybody has any comments on that, otherwise we would um, have a vote to move forward with um, accepting this enforcement hour in order and keeping it in force. Has this enforcement order been sent? Correct. Yes. Okay. And if you received it, Ms. Perez, if you I'm sorry, received I didn't this. Hear your question. What? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Have, have you received this enforcement order? Yes, I received it by mail and by email. Okay. Do you have any uh, reservations regarding the requirements? Not at all. No, nope, we've already obtained the certified arborist. We have a contract with, like I mentioned, Save a Tree. And um, I will be, you know, hoping that their assessment report is ready by the next meeting. And we will follow um, anything that is recommended on that enforcement or on um, the assessment letter, I mean. Okay. You. And I will mention anyway. that. Go ahead, Kate. So I will mention that Save a Tree Garrett has contacted me so that he has a full understanding of what requirements are and what we're looking for on the site. And it sounds like he's going to be able to move forward in a fairly timely manner, which he may even have something to present prior to our next meeting on the 9th in June. Um, so uh, I know one of the questions from Mr. Perez was, you know, because of the time of year and if there are plantings involved, obtaining the plantings, getting them installed, um, you know, if she can move forward more quickly to ninth on at least getting plantings installed. Um, but I'm not sure how that would work with having, it, if there's any other branches that need to come down as well. So it's kind of a comprehensive thing, but moving forward faster is never a problem when it comes to this kind of stuff, as long as it's well planned. So I think um, just keeping that in consideration if the commission wants to maybe allow Dave and I um, to be able to convene on thing if it comes in sooner, or if we want to make sure we review this as a whole on at our next regular scheduled meeting, that's a good consideration to have. Okay, thank you. Anyone on the, any of the commission members have any comments or questions, suggestions? I, I trust that you guys could handle this, you know, Kate, Kate and David. I don't, <clears throat> speaking personally, I don't think we need a full review of what's been planted. I do have a question though, Kate. Uh, Mrs. Perez brings up a good point about, you know, it's always a fact that the trees on any lake lean over and eventually will fall down they're very often helped on Manitouk Lake by the our resident beavers, but um, it's not an issue out in the out in the big basin where I live. But down in the channel where the Prezes live, it's very narrow in spots, and it really impedes the ability of fishermen to maneuver and canoers and kayakers. But more the fishermen with their uh, bass boats to move in in and out of those areas. So it would make sense to me to. You know, if the arborist were to plant more shrubby, bushy type stuff right along the shoreline so that as the trees mature, they don't fall into that narrow portion of the lake. Yeah, um, I, I can see that, that thought process completely. Um, only things I could think of for additional consideration would be uh, the deeper the root mass next to the water body, the more stable that that bank is and that you won't lose that bank in any kind of heavy storm events. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. while they seem pretty heavy and weighted, um, they actually are, you know, if there was any kind of flows to really start moving through there, uh, that would really preserve the property. So, uh, and then the mature canopy does a great job in shading out the invasive. So I think right. that the shrub layer along the water would need to be really thick so that none of the invasives would be able to outcompete. So there needs to be some attention 
um, on the edge. If you ever look at a field, the edge of a field is always a rat's nest with invasives or yeah. unsavory yeah. characters. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, at the shoreline and most of the lake, it's got a dense shrub right along the immediate waterline. Um, and it's only in the places where people, you know, have their clearings for docks and boat launches. Like that's where I get the invasives on my property are those openings for the docks. Um, okay. You know, but along the shoreline, it's it's typically on the east side, it's blueberry and, and stuff like that. And then on my side, it's more like laurel and things like that. Yeah, so I think, you know, in my professional opinion and from what I've seen being on different lakes, um, the lakes that have a 50 foot undisturbed buffer vegetation, whether that just be a thick, dense laurel or blueberries or whatever the natural shrub is, mm -hmm. um, and then having that 50 foot swath that people can use to then access the lake and utilize it, those lakes really seem to, to maintain their quality of health quite a bit. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I think that's a really important consideration when everybody thinks about lawns is that having that lawn set back from the edge of the bank um, really maintain property quality and um, viability and value because your the lake is the value on those properties. Um, as for the tree coming down into you know more of a channel like narrow uh, feature of a water body, that, that one there, you know, um, it, so we want down trees because it creates good microhabitat for the fish. But yep. we don't want so many down trees where you you inhibit navigability through the waterway. So to balance the two, you know, I think some down trees that are close to the edge and don't really span into the flow pattern or into where it needs to be navigated through um, are not a bad feature as long as there's no, uh, you know, flood damage issues as well from things backing up. So it's really a multi-pronged issue when it falls in. I think it's a case-by-case -case basis on that one. So, um you know, because when it's in your backyard or on your house, a down tree is not a benefit. But when it's in the forest, it's a it's a great benefit. So, you know, I think it's us balancing the use with the resources. Does that add anything? Yeah, no, that you, you, I agree entirely. I mean, <clears throat> it's only a problem for now. It's of course you want those trees in the lake because it provides cover for basically the bass and pickerel, um, which is very healthy in that lake, but it's every once in a while that channel gets completely blocked with a big oak or something. And it's, you know, the snowmobilers will go through in the winter and cut it, you know, without getting permits, but it, otherwise it's not navigable in the summer. <clears throat> yeah. I think keeping it navigable is important because it is a resource in that way as well. Yeah. So is there public it's, access it's, to this body of water? Or is it all private? It's private. Yeah, it's private, but there um, a lot of people put in through the gas station. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. I think they have some signs up now, though, don't they? I Yeah, it, it varies every time they change ownership, you know. People seem to think my property is a public launch, too. I get visitors most Saturdays, but strangers driving in with their boats <laughs> is that right oh my gosh it's, it's the god's honest truth okay anyone else have any comments questions suggestions i just have a question about the conservation easement is mrs perez uh comment about uh access for the fire trucks is that the reason for the easement the language of the easement is here um, and attached to the packet. And so uh, let's see. So it states that there should be no building or other construction above or below the ground with exception of necessary drainage as approved by the subdivision plan. There shall be no disturbance or removal of vegetation or soil cover. Agricultural fertilizing and keeping livestock are also prohibited in this area. So those um, are the prohibited activities in the easement and I don't see in here language about getting in with a fire truck no, so I didn't. Uh, 
I think that's a realtor's interpretation, potentially. Of, uh, that was actually explained to us from our real estate um, lawyer at the closing to make oh. sure that we understood the property we were buying um, had access way for the fire department, which, of course, we agreed mm. to when buying the home. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't see that language in here. It wasn't my office that gave you that advice. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, but, you know, I know there have been fire situations where the fire department has put their, um, has drawn water out of the lake. Maybe that's what the lawyer was talking about. Very well could, could be. And, you know, thankfully in the year and a half that we've been here, they have not had to utilize that, but. Thank God. <laughs> there probably any property, if, if, if there's a, an emergency situation, the fire department is going to access your property or access mm -hmm. to the property. That's a pretty typical. Yeah. So I guess the, the bottom line is that that's not the purpose of the conservation conservation easement. So in well, it's the thing is they've let people build within it. Uh, the foundation of Mrs. Perez's home is within it. Is it isn't looked like that anyways no that's not the case so if you're looking here with the foundation okay yeah that's you see this and see this line here which is closer to the water and then this says 75 foot conservation easement is pointing to that line oh okay okay and then this one here is a 100 foot wide restricted building area so that would have been off the wetland most likely does the, town, line. does the town have any responsibility uh, for uh, conditions within the easement? Hmm. The reason I'm asking that question is because if you look at, you know, the town has an easement on everybody's property from the middle of the road in. So, yeah. To, to give you my, my snapshot on that, Fred, the easement, the, east, the restrictions or something like that. The easements no. inured to the benefit of the town of Granby and the other uh, homes in that subdivision. So anyone in that subdivision or the town of Granby could bring an action in law to enforce the restrictions of the covenant. You can argue that this, you know, this body, uh, the IWWC uh, could do it or, you know, the the board of selectmen could do it, but many of um, Mrs. Perez's neighbors could enforce the conservation easement as well. That's one way to do it. A lot of people give the conservation easement, like I did. I put seven acres in conservation easement, and I gave it to the Granby Land Trust, and they right. would have the right to enforce it. But in this case, it's the town of Granby and her neighbors and Diane's uh, neighbors. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else? Anybody? You can go ahead. Questions, comments? Right. Hearing none, um, based on the fact that Ms. Perez and I presume her husband have uh, seen and read this uh, enforcement order um, and uh, are in agreement with it, um, I don't know whether we need to have a, a motion um, other than to close the hearing. No, so um, you would leave. The, so I, I would leave the hearing open because it's an it's an order that we're enforcing, and um, if you were going to make a. Um, if you're going to take a vote, the vote would be whether or not this order remains in effect, is modified, or is withdrawn. I make a motion that the uh, order remain in effect as drafted. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, as we've done on other these uh, Zoom type of meetings, we're only going to be taking dissenting votes and abstention. So is anyone uh, against the motion? 
anyone want to abstain from voting? Okay, hearing nothing, um, the motion passes. And I think that is what we uh, would all like to see happen. Anyway, um, do you have, want to add anything, Kate, to your, uh, you have an agent update in here? Um, yeah, and just before we move on from 14 Cranberry, I know John spoke to it, um, but if there was the ability to move forward at a faster pace than at the next meeting um, for Garrett's mitigation plan, if staff was able to review that and, and we could check in with the chairman, I think it'd be good to get a understanding from the commission if that's an acceptable um, method of, of progressing. Do we need a motion on that or can we just give a cent to that? I just, as I, long as you guys let me know and I don't run around doing things without you, that's all. Well, it's I've fine been, with me. Yeah, it's fine with me. Yep. Sound is breaking up, so I'm not sure what we're planning on doing here. So the plan is oh. that if there is a plan for mitigation prior to the ninth that you and I can review, Dave and Abby, that if it's sound, that they are implementing that plan. This, this is uh, at uh, 424 Salmon Brook. We're, about. No, we're still at cranberry so just saying that when garrett from the save a tree comes in we can um review it and not have to wait till the ninth if it comes in quicker so they can just get these resolved okay all right do we need any motion on to that effect no i think everybody here said Jen. they're right yeah yep um, I thought we'd gone on to these other agent updates. And so then um, you're all set we'll for tonight. All right. Thank I'd just you. like to thank everyone again for their time. And uh, we'll get that assessment report to you. And we will definitely uh, mitigate this as soon as possible. So again, thank you to everyone. And our apologies again. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Perez. Say hello to Mr. Perez. I will. Thank you so much. Good luck. We're very thankful to you and for being so cooperative. Thank you. Thank you. Those are, you know, some of the newest neighbors on the lake, and they immediately got involved with the Friends of Manitouk Lake. They're, you know, I'm sure this was completely unintentional. And they're, they're very nice people who donate a lot of volunteer time for, uh, Charter Oak Boxing in the inner city of Hartford, uh, which keeps kids off the street. I, I know that because I'm involved in the boxing world. So um, I think you'll be I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, Kate and David. Oh yeah, so so far it's been delightful for yeah. this type of situation we're in. <laughs> so um, in terms of other business, uh, we can leave all the fun stuff till our meeting on the ninth, and give you guys a good update then. Um, trying to think if there's anything in particular. I got the RFR for 424 since that came up, 424 Salmon Brook, um, and uh, issued them a letter so that they had a good understanding of where the limitations of an hazard activity. So you'll get that in your next packet. So they're coordinated on that work over there. So this is just across the lake. Um, and there'll be some other stuff coming up that's in the works, but nothing. Uh, that makes too much sense to talk about right now. So we've been staying busy in town. I don't know if that's good. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted, Dave. entertain a motion for adjournment of the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. 
Okay. Uh, anyone against? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> anyone know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. The meeting is uh, hereby adjourned. Thank you all.